Welcome to this video on exactly how to set up fuzzy search for bubble.io. The reason why we would want to be able to set up fuzzy search is quite often we want to be able to return results for inexact matches or matches which are quite close but not exactly the same as to what we've typed. On the screen here you can see an example of a search which has been set up natively in bubble. So right now we have a list of animals and we can search for the animal names that we can see here. So for example, I can search for buffalo. Right now we can see that it comes up. But if I remove this and I put a lowercase b, which is a small typo here, we can see that this result doesn't come up. So for these reasons and these use cases, we do like to set up fuzzy search as we believe it will provide a better user experience in this particular use case. Before I jump into this video of exactly how to set it up, I do want to note that this video is based on this article in our functionality reference, which goes into exactly how to set up fuzzy search. In addition to this, uh, a caveat on the way that we are setting up fuzzy search, this utilizes a plugin and this plugin works by downloading the full list of data onto the client and then filtering that information with you know, the search constraint that we decide to place in. So it isn't usable for really large database, both in terms of the performance of the plugin itself and the amount of workload units that are consumed. So jumping over to my editor now, we'll go through the process of exactly how to set up fuzzy search. The first step is I'm gonna to go to the plugin page here and I'm going to add a plugin. I'm going to search for fuzzy and I'm going to add this plugin, fuzzy search and autocomplete. I'm going to go back to my design tab and what this plugin has done is it's provided a new visual element called search and autocorrect and I'll add this to the page. What I want to provide now is I want to provide the data tape that I want it to be searched on, which will be animals and the data source, which is just going to be do a search for animals without any constraints here. The field that I want to search on is going to be the name, so the name of the animal itself, and I want to set the text to match from an input box. So essentially, when I provide a search string here, I want that to be used to filter this information. So I'll tick this box. What I next need to do is I need to provide an input box ID. So the way that I do this is first, I need to go to my settings, I need to go to my general tab, and I need to make sure that this checkbox is Ticked. So expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. So I can see it's ticked here. If I go back to my design tab, what that means is that at the bottom, I can provide an ID attribute to this element. So I'm going to write in search. I'm then going to go back to my search and autocorrect. And I'm going to write search. So in this way, I'm linking this search to the string that's provided here. Some things I do want to note is there is a threshold value. So right now off the bat, it's 0 0.6, but this can be adjusted as closer to zero, which is a perfect match between the values that we're filtering through and the search string input or a threshold of one, which means that it would just match to anything. And there's also other checkboxes that you can click, such as making the search case sensitive. The next step that I need to do is I want to make sure that the results of the search and autocorrects operations are actually displayed in my repeating group. So to do this, what I will do is I'll go to my repeating group animals here. I will set the initial data source just to be an unconstrained search. So if there's no input, we have a search for animals with all the animals being provided and returned on the page. I then want to set up a condition which runs when the input A, which is that search query string, is not empty. And when it is not empty, I want the data source to be search and autocorrects A's matches. So essentially, when a user provides a search string, it will then be filtered by the constraints that we've set up or the fields that we've set up in our search and autocorrect. And then these results will be displayed in the repeating group. So ha let's have a look at exactly how this works in practice. So we can see again, we've got the list here and I've searched for Buffalo and it's coming up. Let's put a small typo in of a small b, still there. I can remove an f, small typo again, and again we can see that buffalo is still appearing. So this video goes into exactly how to set up fuzzy search. If you have any questions with regards to this video, please feel free to leave a comment below.